Well, it's blowing an absolute hooligan. I've only just managed to get the rods out. Look, the bivvy's actually had to be set up low and facing the other way. The rods are out, eventually. Pop chops in there. We're at the Park Lake. Welcome to this week's vlog. If it's the first time you've come across my channel and you like this type of videos and you want to see more of this type of videos then you may want to think about hitting the subscribe button don't forget to hit that bell notification icon and you'll never miss a video or an upload again well we're at the park lake been blowing an absolute hooligan i don't even know if you can hear me i don't even know what the sound's like because it's been blowing that much i've had to turn the volume up on the microphone on the top of the camera because it's just been blowing an absolute bloody crazy one finally managed to get the rods out, I've had to put heavier leads on even to get out 30 yards where I want to fish we got about half an hour before dark probably the sound you're hearing now is probably as windy as windy can be so I'm trying to point the microphone towards me and the camera and it's mild, it's going to get cold in the next couple of days we've got 48 hours and we're going to be having a look at a little heater from China that I've sourced well, I didn't sort it, someone else told me about it, so I ordered one up and got one for your stove. And we're going to be having a little closer look, because I know I promised it the last couple of vlogs, we just haven't got to do it, of my little combi rig. I'm actually going to do a video, a sole video on that combi rig, at some point, hopefully this session actually. And uh, I'll put a link up there if I've done it. But yeah, we're, uh, we're rocking and rolling, good to be down, we've had a real mild three or four days. Be interesting to see what the water temperature is. I reckon it's about 6 degrees, so more than warm enough to get a bite. And we're going to chill out because it's not going to be as windy now. I mean, it was 50 mile an hour gusts earlier on. You should have seen it. I took a little bit of footage on my phone camera to show you, and it was proper white waves coming up and over. I just had to sit here with the old fluffy creature and see, uh, you know, I'll wait for it to subside a bit before we even got attempted to get that up facing away. And it's so low, and he's in there, he was freezing his nuts off. So there we're at, that's what's happening, that's where we're at. I'm going to watch the sunset. I managed to get the rods out a little while ago. Even in that wind, it took me about four or five casts to get it on the spot that I really wanted to fish for all three rods. Fishing uh, those little combi links, little 10 wheel pop ups with uh, little plastic maggots on top. And we're going to spray, when it gets dark, because the flying rats are out in force. I'm going to spray about 20 or 30 baits around, around the area, because I just, you know, hopefully. They might have a little feed because it's warm, it's mild. Plus we had that lovely ghosty common, that big old ghosty common last trip down, which was a month ago now. A bloody month ago, that's crazy, isn't it? We've got loads planned for this year. We're going up north again to the, the Peterborough Lake. We'll be doing the summer on there. The Alien Lake, we'll be doing a bit on there as well. And of course the Park Lake as well. We'll be doing a bit on here on the spring. But it's looking good now. Now it's calmed down. I always, I was going to come yesterday, but it was, it was proper blowing 50 mile an hour winds, 60 mile winds all day, so it's just, there's no point. Now, to me, you've got a bit of cold weather coming up, you've got one degree at night for the next two nights, not tonight, but tomorrow and the night after. It's been warm for four or five days, I've had a big blow up for a couple of days. Now's the time to me, just after the blow up is when I expect a fish to come out. There's, there's one, two, there's three other guys on the lake for a couple of nights, but hopefully, Something's going to make an appearance. I just got a feeling they're still around this area. I think they like this area in winter, just this big open water down the westerly blowing wind. We weather, pre the, the pressure, the air the, the air pressure is under 1,000, 994, 993 I've seen. Rising a little bit tomorrow, a little bit of rain tonight, about 11, 12 o'clock, but bloody hell. It's warm, air pressure's low, we've had a big blow up, we got a cold snap coming so to me there are ideal conditions in the winter for when you're going to get a bite couldn't get the pod down now look, look there's the pod all dismantled on the floor and i've had to put a long bank stick in down there just to be able to get the rods in so if you can see that can you see that? can you see the rods where are the rods yeah should be able to see that down there you know, down there somewhere, down there. Yeah, and had the rods up with a 
points up, which is not what I want to do really, because I want to have the boppies on the floor and fish slack lines, but I've had to tighten them up a bit because of the wind and because I can't get the pod, the low profile pod down there. So, you know, needs must, you have to adapt your surroundings, don't you? So yeah, so I look forward to showing you the heater, look forward to talking about a little combi rig. I'm going to get settled in, I'm going to move this brolly round now, put the front on and get sorted properly for the night. Now that wind's subside, I'm going to get him sorted, I'm going to get some dinner on. I think we've got steak, a nice bit of steak and steamed or boiled, well, boiled vegetables tonight. Of course, we're on the old obligatory New Year's Day diet as well, so we're going to try and lose a stone. So, so that would be good to... If I do that, lose the stones, I'm just getting too pork chop, you know, I'm just getting too fat as a fat as a fat fat sod. And it's no good. The older you get, the, the fatter you get, and it's not good. So I'm gonna try and lose a stone between now and next Christmas. So we shall see. Just eat a little bit more sensibly. Right, I'm gonna crack on. That's where we're at. And we're gonna see what happens, crack on, and see if we can catch one over the next 48 hours. Catch you soon. Who's out and about? Who's out and about? Not for long, look. He's actually out. Bless him, look. Having a little sniff around. Well, it's first thing in the morning. God, that was windy last night. That was proper windy. Look how much of a difference it is. From that, to this, from that, To this. It's crazy, wasn't it? I couldn't even get the brolly in the position that I wanted to till about nine o'clock at night. I had to have it set up down there with the back of the brolly facing the wind because it was that vicious. It really was absolutely crazy. Oh my god, look, what's he doing in there? Look. He's, what's he look? He's found he's he's found a bone. He's found his bone. And he wants to go and put it somewhere. I think he might have just burnt himself on the cooker. <laughs> I think he, I can smell burning air. I think he might have burnt himself as he went past. I, I smell his burning, burning carp dog air. Bless him, eh? He's out. He's active. Look at him go. Look. Oh no, he's eating some. He's eating something off the floor now. Right. Where were we? Yes. We managed to get ourselves all sorted. In the end, look. It's cold this morning. Little bit of a frost, not too much, just a, a light frost. But it's looking beautiful. Looking absolutely beautiful out there. Had a really good night's sleep in the end for a change. No liners, no nothing, only the bloody from the wind. That was about it. Not seeing anything, didn't expect to see anything with all that wind and everything. I just want to get settled all out for today. I actually have to put on a three ounce less just to get 40 yards. It was that strong. I was out there in my chesties casting out and it took me absolutely took me about half an hour to get on which I thought was on the spot anyway but it was um, it was a little bit nippy last night in the end but we was using the that Chinese heater that I was, I was talking about yeah look here it is there's the Chinese heater it goes on there now that goes on top you put your gas cooker on that fits on top, well, perches on top, nicely, and you're having a low heat, and with the metal bits sort of grating inside, it retains the heat. Gives you a little bit of more warmth on a low gas bowl. It comes with one of these, like a little, well, just a little bit of metal, really, so you can lift it off. How good is it, really, honestly? <coughs> um, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's magically, God, that's a brilliant bit of kit. I think, realistically, even if you just had the cooker on low, you're gonna get that bit of heat anyway. Hang on, look at him, look. Hey, he's having a good smell of everything, can he? Look at him. He smelt something out here. We might have had a foxy or something, look. 
He's like, look, 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 look at him, look. He's, he might be a rat. Might be a rat, look. He's looking, mate. He's, he's, he's on the trail, isn't he? He's on the trail of something. God, he makes me die, does. Does nothing, nothing. I haven't even seen him all night. And then he's like active, he's like a bloodhound. Look, look at him sniffing the floor, looking for something. He's found something, hasn't he? He'd be on something in a minute. You'll see something run past in a minute. You'll see a rat or a hedgehog or something, or a, or a ferret or a something and run past and he'd be on it. But yeah, it's talking talk about the cooker. Um, yeah, I, does it make any difference? Like I said, I think just having a low heat on the gas, on the normal cooker, probably do just as well. The thing I don't like about it is that you can't, it's not fixed onto anything, so it's just sort of perched on. Oh, he's going to burn himself on that bloody cooker. He's, he's, oh, he's, eat, he's eating things now. He's found something. He's eating things. But yeah, it's just perches on top of you. So it's a little bit unstable, a little bit dangerous, if I'm honest. You could just knock it over, and that, when that's so hot, that metal, that could burn your ground sheet, that could burn anything. You could knock it over. Uh, I mean, I mean it, just, it just seems a bit of a... Bit of a nightmare really waiting to happen so i won't be using that again but i'll put a link down there so if you can see it, i think it's about 11 quid from china it took about a month to get here it's okay but i think it could be a little bit dangerous if you knock it over if you're a bit clumsy like me you can knock it over so it might be a bit of a nightmare right so what we're going to do is the plan of action today is it's actually you don't feel that cold but now i've got my big jacket on i've got me my hat on my black chicken bobble hat on so i'm warm as toast we're going to see what happens for about three or four hours, but it's only just gone eight o'clock. It's just got first light. I've been up for about an hour watching. It's always worth watching, especially when it's flat calms. You can see if anything moves anywhere. So the plan is, we're going to see a few cups of tea, cups of coffee I had this morning, and we're going to see what happens for the day to about midday. Then I'm going to go and have a walk around, walk around the snags, walk around a few different places. Then I'm going to reel in, show you me rigs show you those little combi rigs that I said I was going to explain to you in a little bit more detail we're going to get back out for the night nice bit of star oh, we've got a lovely bit of dinner tonight steak and vegetables because we're on a diet no carbs and that's what the plan of action is going to be for today watch just keep watching and go and have a look see if we can find them maybe have a move don't know yet I think I'm in the right area you never know what is the water temperature it's saying to look at it now, 5.5, which is low. That is low, so, you know, we're up against it. We really are up against it, that's for certain. Look, he's still out, look, he's out again. Look, at him, look. got his bone now. He's snipping around still. Oh, that's it, I think we're done. I think he's gonna be back in now. I think we're... No, he's having, what's he, what's he doing in there? Oi, get out of there. He's trying to eat all my food and everything. He's out of control, isn't he? Don't do nothing, and then he's like, he's all over the swim. He's all over the place. Look, look. Yeah, so that's a plan of action. I'm going to keep watching, keep seeing. See if we can find the fish today. If they're in a snag or something, we'll move as close as possible and get them out there. But, yeah, that's the way it is. Catch you soon, guys. Right, welcome back. We've just had a little walk round. We reeled in, got the rods in, all nice and quick less disturbance, got them in ready to rebate them later and then we had to walk around get some provisions from the van, me and the fluffy one, he's stuck in there, bless him. So we did that, we've come back and now I just want to run you through quickly the rig, the little combi rig that I use. Now let's have a little look here, look, put it up there on the bivvy so you can see it, there's the rig. There's the rig, I think you can see. I'll put it down so you can see it a bit better actually. Just talk you through it. Right. Now, the rig itself, I've been using it for about five, six, seven years. Really good rig. It's good for fishing little baits, little 10 mil baits. But I like sometimes fishing a little bit differently in the winter. If it's if I'm struggling a little bit, rather than go on the hinge stiff rig or a choddy or something like that, I like to find things down a bit make it a little bit more difficult for me to eject and to get it low down on the deck. So the hook's just popping up, a little bit of supple section and then a stiffer bit. So I'll run you, I'll run you through it quickly. Now, 
use a stretch of leg core about a foot long, I suppose, on a rotary rig. On a paternoster rotary rig type of thing. Little leads, depends on how far out you're fishing, but I only tend to fish up to about eight yards, but I'm fishing about 40 yards here. So I've got little one, one and a half ounce leads on. I want to make as little disturbance as possible. I want to use this little lead to get to where I want to cast to. So I'm only, as I say, I'm only fishing out about 40 yards. Then we've got a ring swivel on there, size eight ring swivel. That's attached to about, I reckon, probably about eight to 10 inches of 25 pound black amnesia. You can use the clear amnesia. I like the black because on the bottom, it's all a bit dark. You've got all the leaves and everything else. It sort of blends in. Whether it makes any difference, I don't know, but it's how I feel confident using it. Then you've got real supple braid, probably about half an inch. Then I've got a size five, size five curve shank, whatever make of, whatever brand of curve shank that you like, whatever you've got confidence in. It's got to be mega sharp. That little half inch of supple braid means that it's got a stiffer section of amnesia. Then you've got that bit of suppleness, so that hook moves about a bit more. I suppose you could say it's a bit like the Ronnie rig, but without all the junk on it, without all the metal on it. So then level with the uh, barb of the size 5 curve shank, you've got a little hook bead, little hook bead on there and running up and down from the shank you've got a one of them tiny little hook ring swivels, tiny little things they are. The bottom of the hook, I've got a tiny little bit of shrink tube which just kicks round so it's a bit like a kicker and then I mount using dental floss, a little size 10, buoyant, it's got to be extra buoyant don't forget, so check out with whoever's pop-ups you use the smaller the better, like a little 10 mil out, and it's got to be as buoyant as anything. These are mega buoyant, these are the System X ones that I use. And I know they're mega buoyant because it's my sort of mix that they've taken on board. Then I put, I don't always, but most of the time I put a buoyant maggot cluster on top. And there you go, that, that simplifies it. You put a little bit of putty on the join between the amnesia and the soft coated braid. And you take that off until it just slowly sinks. And that is the combi rig that I use. Cook loads of fish on it over the years. That 47 that I had, that ghosty two-tone tall common that I had last trip down, that was caught on that rig. You, what I tend to do is I tend to use like a white little terminal pop up with a pink maggot cluster or a pink bait with a white one or a white on both, white maggot cluster and a white 10 mil pop up. I like to have three different sort of colours on there, all the same flavour. And also I soak the uh, pop ups and the Mega clusters in Tallinn for the winter, really sugary. If you haven't checked it out, check out Tallinn. I think Hinders do it and a few other places do it. But that's what I soak all my plastic in. You know, you need your flavours. I had a bit of System X flavour in there as well. That gets you going. You put a little bit of ember oil in it, whatever you want to put in there, you know, but that's what I use. And that completes the rig, really. You know, it, 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 it's nice because it, if you're fishing in the silt, which I tend to fish the harder bits of silt in the winter, rather than the, the hard sort of gravel areas. I like the silt, that's where there's any food that's left is. is. And the pattern oyster rig, it just, it, you know, it, if it sinks in a little bit with the light leads, then that lays out flat. Lays out lovely and flat. And where you've got a little bit of, it's sort of semi-stiff, supple with the amnesia, that lays over any debris if there is any. And then what happens is that sort of claw, that size five curve shank just sits down and that pop-up sits above it and it moves up and down the shank the hook bait. So if a fish picks it up, stiffness of the amnesia, and then the suppleness of the braid, goes in its mouth, hook takes hold, and they're blowing, if they do, they're blowing that little pop up with the maggot cluster on down the shank, it puts it in even more. They've had some very good success on it. So there you go, that's the, the uh, combi rig that I use. I thought I'd just show you that quickly, give you a little talk through while I use it, and. The, you know, the sort of component and makeup of it. So we're going to get those out. Let's have a look at the water temperature, what it's doing. It's gone up 6.5 today. They've steadily been going up. They were below 6 earlier on, first thing. Now it's gone up to 6.5. What's the time? It's 20 to 1. So I'm going to get the rods out. Settle in. We've got a lovely steak. Steak dinner tonight. Bit of steak. Fry that up. What I do is I put the vegetables on. I've got mixed vegetables, as I said before. I'm on a diet. Got to lose a bit of weight. I'm going to try and lose a stone this year. 
you know, comfortably, I think I'll probably do more than that, but stone would be nice. So we put the vegetables on for about 15 minutes, 10, 10 minutes. Then I put the steak on, I was brown at either side, so it's a little bit pink inside. Leave that settle, pour the uh, vegetables on top, and you've got a lovely, wholesome, protein-full, beautiful dinner that, you know, which is good for you as well, gives you lots of energy, and is carb-free, and is, um, is good for you. And it's gonna help me on my diet anyway. That's what I sort of normally have anyway. I might have a few other bits with it, and mushrooms and all that, which I might include next time. I forgot to get the mushrooms. Schoolboy era. Do like the old mushrooms with the old steak. But we're having that tonight. Right, I'm going to crack on because I want to get the rods out before dark. I've got to tie some rigs up. Tie them little combi rigs up. Put my little baits on, my maggot clusters. Then I'm going to find some spots, get them out, settle in for the evening. Me and him, the fluffy creature, chill out and uh, hopefully we might see anything. It's gone flat calm now, look. It's got absolutely flat calm. So if any disturbs, any bubblers, anything like that, that's why I was taking my binoculars. I can see where anything is. Gives you sort of half a clue what you're doing. So these are rods. I'm going to get them all tied up and get them out there and uh, catch up yourself. Welcome back. Morning. God, it's absolutely bitter. That easterly wind that's coming from across the field is, well, I can't explain how cold it is. So we're packing up this morning. Nothing last night. Really, really quiet. Cold, bloody freezing. Rod's just still on the dance floor. We've got him rearing to go. Everything's packed up. Just took the water temperature, 4.8 degrees. That's dropped two degrees from when I got here. Two degrees. It's crazy, isn't it? And it is bitter. I mean, it's standing here now. I've still got my jacket on, but my face is getting cold. <sighs> I wouldn't be surprised if this freezes. If that wind drops tonight, this lake will freeze. Wouldn't surprise me at all. But at least we were out. Pork chop. Flutly one of me. We were out for a little trip. First one since Christmas, which is nice. And look, we've got... Um, Oh look, he's he's seen so he's after he's off he's look he's having a bit of a wolf up. Isn't he? Having a bit of a wolf up. Look at him, he's seen a couple of other dogs over the field. Come boy. He's seen a couple of dogs over the field, that's what he's seen, bless him. Yeah, but at least with that, he's had a run out, he's loving it, he's enjoying it. Even though it's a bit cold and he'll be wanting to go home any second now. We'll be back, I think we'll be back at Sandhurst next trip. So that'd be good. Uh, whether we'll catch anything, I don't know. It is that time of year, beginning of January, it can be really bitterly cold and most lakes will be frozen. They've already frozen once or twice, so you never know, do you? Right, I'm going to crack on because he's jumping around like a crazy thing over there, bark at the other dogs. I'm going to reel the rods in, take one last look. It does look nice out there, it's just a bit too cold. Right, don't forget, guys, if you haven't subscribed, you like these type of videos, you may want to think about hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification, and you'll never miss another video. Right guys, see you for the next video.